Good evening, everybody. Yep, hey, Eric. Hey everyone, so this is a quiet round until now. Mike, uh, are you there? I'm here. Hello? Hi, hi. Oh, okay. I'm so freaking... I'm still confused by Cisco's notion of of their icons. Well, anyway, um, Dave, did you... You had some comments on the terminology uh, pull request I made, 202. And yeah, I should be... They should be fairly straightforward to walk through and fix if we agree, but uh, I, yeah, oh, sorry, I meant I to share that. I don't think there's anything contentious, I think it's all editorial. Uh, so did 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 I screw up and duplicate one of the terms? Yep, that's one of them. Okay, um, all right, so uh, uh let's talk about this negotiates first because I think that's probably. The yeah, none of the other do. definitions had this, and I couldn't understand what this meant. So for consistency, I propose that the quickest resolution is to just remove it so all the definitions are consistent. The term negotiates doesn't apply anyplace else, so I wasn't sure why that was there. It reads better, in my opinion, without it. So, uh... Oh, I see. Because this is this is the this is a, a qualifying term on the on the on right. the bottom, right? Right. Um, there is, it produces and uses, but in this one place we had like negotiates, and I didn't know what that meant. And this is not the long exposition section. That's later. Thomas. Agree. Okay. So I'm. So um, some of your comments were trailing periods, and uh, I thought we had established that we didn't need, we didn't want them. But I guess in some cases we continue well, typing. So, we did decide that, but every place else in this particular pull request, it added periods to all of the definitions. Yeah, I tried to drop that. I thought, but okay, I guess uh -huh. I see that I didn't do that. My point is, it should be consistent. I don't care either way, um, but it was. Uh, less changes to the PR can propose adding a period here than to remove to then to propose removing all the other ones. Fair enough. So uh, this definition to, should uh, that was in the unsorted section. There was two oh, yeah. so, so in unsorted section. Though. Yeah, right. So this should move up to line five eighty. What is five eighty? It's just in alphabetical order in between the other ones in the. Uh, uh, artifacts. artifacts section, correct. Okay. So this ordering is basically in parallel to the new ordering proposed by Simon. Is that correct? Yes, this is taking Simon's ordering. Ah, this is taking Simon's ordering. Okay, so it's not in parallel. It's based yes. on that. Thank you. Or ordering it based upon the fact that we have, have edited these terms since he did the ordering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to apply the ordering again. And what about uh, this is basically bottom... Michael rebased Simon's changes, and this is it, right? Okay, thanks. Uh, so we have used by verifier. This is where uh, this one was missing the used by and produced by, like all the other ones had. And so this is an endorsement. And so I said endorsements are used by the verifier and produced by the endorser, which is consistent with the definitions of. Uh, a verifier and endorser, if it stays in the, in the picture. Okay, so I'm making that change in my copy. Okay. Um, and this is already at line 523. And that's the duplication where verifier is duplicated in the unsorted section and in the sorted section. Okay, so basically I can delete the unsorted part is what I Correct. thought you're telling me. Correct. I just, okay. I just had that text left over. So that's why I was like, <laughs> uh, where does it go? A uh, quick question here. Uh, so if the endorsement says this is CC uh, verified or CC compliant, is that a capability?
or it's FIPS compliant. Is that, that that could be a capability? I guess. I don't know. It it Cap could could be. I don't think it's the job of the definition to answer that, but I'd answer your question. I, it could be, yeah. Okay, so if that, all this is fine with capabilities, which I seems like a function uh, to me. Uh, so capabilities are potential functions, I guess. Um, well, I'm fine. So again, but we want to endorse this. Like uh, I like this. I trust this. That's maybe a capability. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I tend to agree with you that I wouldn't normally think of it as a capability. It could be, yeah. but I wouldn't normally think of it that way. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. So so that, that's my only uh, comment here. That a capability seems a tad bit arbitrarily constricting the scope. Uh, although not, characteristics is. Sorry? That's not changed in this definition. You're commenting about the previous definition we already had. Mm, yeah. So I'm just looking at capability. I test this capability, I think, uh, which I'm not looking anymore at at the moment, I think. And yeah. uh, uh, but, but uh, in the context of that, I was uh, uh, realizing, I think, ad hoc, that this might be a tad bit uh, constraint. Was that in the definition of endorsement? I think so. When the word capability showed up? Yeah, I think so. I can't tell anymore because I'm not seeing it anymore. <laughs> yeah, same. And thinking it was endorsement. But... So, uh, in, uh, we don't want, whenever we say compare, we don't want to put that in parenthesis. Well, I observe, observed that... Um, this PR was inconsistent, but the text already was before this point that if you looked at like, um, I don't know, relying party, basically there's three compares in here between this line and 519 and 571. And the other two did not have parentheses and this one did. Yeah. So it was already inconsistent in the text before. When I first noticed this, when I noticed that the paragraph, that the period was not on this one and the period was not on all the other ones. Okay, so I fixed that one. I just fixed them all in my copy. Right. Uh, endorsement. So that's we moved it up. That's what happened there. Stop, Stop for a second, because there's the word capabilities in 596, which is not a change, right? This was already yeah. true in the text, but that, okay, so it was endorsements that we were talking about. But, uh, okay. Technically, if there's any issue there, um, Hank, then it could be done outside of this PR, which is yes, about yes. I will make a note and okay. come back to that. Okay. Cool. All right, I'm going to commit this. If you've made those changes that I, I talked have. about, then yeah, then yeah, that sounds fine to me. And did you end up adding the period or removing all I the other? Added periods? the period everywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, reload the page before trying again. I did reload the page. <laughs> Apparently there's some kind of cloud engine with pigeons running it or something. Hamsters in the wheel. Yeah. I really like Brian Trammell's Curious Pigeons. They're lots of fun. Uh, so I'm gonna close this 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 as having been solved. Um, yeah, if you want to clean uh, right next to my name in the reviews up at the top, and there's the little red plus minus and right next to that, there's a little circle. If you click on the circle next to it, the little two arrows next to it, that will clear, that should clear my uh, plus minus. Okay. So it won't look like, uh, there we go. Now it won't look like I was objected to the merge. Okay. All right. It says, I've done all of your comments. Please look at it again. Let's look at that circle, please. Okay. Uh, this was an issue, and we had a pull request relating to it. This changes the abstract. I accept it. I think you had a comment, Dave, in there, and I accepted it because I think it was just believable or something. It's known as. Yeah, it was requires you had a there was a typo in here. There's a typo there, and the uh, is known as since I and I marked as approved after I saw you mar you accepted both my uh, wordsmithing. There was a longer phrase there, and I trimmed it to just is known as. 
Yeah. It used to say something like goes under the name of. But yeah, I thought, I, thought friendly, I thought it was a friendly amendment, so I went ahead yeah. and accepted it. Any other comments about this? I think Hank, you'd approved it before. So Ned or uh, Waypan? Everybody else okay? Or nothing, go ahead and merge. That one automatically closed 226. I forget what keyword was used in the description. Yeah. Say closed. Okay. Okay. So now we aren't uh, have any poll requests open. Now we get into hard so work. Simon's original was closed as a result. Yes. The one. Okay. Yeah. Now we get into hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and as a reminder, I have to leave at quarter two, so I have half an hour. Um, well, let's ask the question first of all. Are we going to meet next week, I guess? Yes? I'd say yes. Okay. It I still need to to add uh, my, my review to the issues. Still need to make that pass. Okay, well, we got a lot of them. Uh, you want to start with one of yours, Thomas, since you presumably already have your view on that one. Which, which one? Do you want to let's start with one of yours, since you already presumably have have made your views known. Right. Yeah. Huh. What is this? Uh, I can't remember the clock. I think this is in the timestamp example, if I remember right. Yeah. Saying the difference between the two values have to be less than a threshold between between the two points. Right? Between the. Yeah, I didn't understand the reference to threshold. Um. And the requirement for that to be large enough enough to account for the maximum perimeted clocks Q. Here. Basically, you know, if they were perfectly in sync, then this uh, then the delta between those would be propped away. If you were to look at the timing diagram, but it's not going to be exactly propped away because the clocks aren't exactly synchronized. It's basically clock prop delay plus or minus the clock skew. Right. Well, let me bring up the difference between the two clocks. So I mean, like clock skew. I need to pull up the diagram. Okay. Um, okay. So I think the two things subtracted is time VG, which is the time at the top, and time RG, which is the verifier's first line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so it's saying uh, the prop delay would be the ideal answer, right? Meaning the time it takes for the stuff to go through the processing, to go into evidence, and it's transmitted across the network and come to the verifier. And if those were perfectly in sync, that would be the, the uh, that's how old the information is, right? By the time it gets to the verifier, it's as old as time PG. And if you subtract those, you can say, ah, this is, you know, five seconds old or something like that, right? But if the propagation delay is 30 seconds, then it's, you know, 35 seconds old, even though the clock difference is only five. Or sorry, only you know. Okay, but what's your, what you're really interested in knowing here is the age of the claim, isn't it? Correct, correct. So, and, you have to account and that for, is governed by the policy, right, on the verifier? Right, the verifier says you have to have generated the values or, you know, measured the values or whatever in this example, right? This is an example section. Yeah, right? yeah. The policy says, I need stuff that's been measured no more than such and such ago. Okay, and whatever that such and such is, that's the threshold. Cool. So, that, 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 the thing that confused me is that this, with, which uh, sound like, sounded like the very important thing, the very important uh, decision that the verifier takes in this context 
was not was not was not uh, uh, explicitly um, said. Whereas we're talking about this uh, this thing about the clock skew, which is yes, okay, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, bit here. Not... What the intent is, uh, if you have suggestions on wordsmithing, once you understand the intent, you know, feel free to suggest how it could be uh, clear. Like right, okay, if, you're right. This is about a policy. The threshold is part of the policy. How fresh do you need it? You you being the verifier, how fresh of information you actually need is a policy decision. I, I think the point Thomas is making is that the, the text um, overemphasizes the threshold, uh, which is a te uh, uh, which is uh, dealing with the clock skew, and yeah. so blurs the fact that in fact what we really care about is the age of the evidence. Correct. Right? No, I, I get that. I get that. Do you uh, have a suggested phrase? Do you want to generate a pull request? Do you want me to generate a pull request, which won't be today? We'll do that. Okay. No worries. Okay. Yeah, I think we just need to, I think we maybe just need to put, like, that's whole paragraph is one sentence. Yeah, you can say, I think, what I the think... fire's threshold is uh, a measure, I'm, this is not the right phrasing, right? But it's a measure yeah. of how fresh the evidence is, which accounts for, you know, uh, things like propagation delay, um, signing time, clock skew, et cetera. That's... Yeah, I, I would just split this up into maybe three sentences, okay, and uh, make sure the first sentence says is about the fact about the age of the evidence. That's all. But it sounds like Thomas, you're willing to take a take a shot at it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Thanks, yeah. Thomas. Cheers. Michael, you still there? Okay, yeah, your screen went away for a second there. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just went back to this. Thomas Osadi, come on. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah, all right. We found the right Thomas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of think that, you know, parents, so I don't know if you saw there's a, a IESG is considering a new working group that would make transmission of this kind of uh, vid A and V uh, more device uh, protocol independent, so we could all have our own favorite transmitters um, and be able to switch between different video with really quickly, maybe. Um, anyway, that sounds great to me. Um, I'm going to go to another one of Thomas's. I think he had at least two down at the bottom. Oh, yeah, there's at the bottom of the screen, I think he had at least two other ones. Find Thomas. <laughs> oh. That's the right guy. We need to find Thomas. Oh no, he only oh. had one. Oh, okay, one. maybe the other ones were for the other Thomas then. Oh, could be. Yeah, could be Thomas Hartron. Okay. Who's not on the call, so don't know. Yeah. It's a, okay, at the very bottom. Of the screen before on the bottom of page one, it was Thomas Dash in the title. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, all right. That's and so it didn't say which Thomas. Okay, we're, we are working on this with uh, uh, with Eric and Hank, but we are still in it's, it's still in flux. Um, okay. So do we assign this one to you, Thomas? for me okay yes yeah. okay So I didn't write Guy in all of them, but all the rest of them were from Guy's comments. Um, I don't know, so many. Uh, and I don't know what to do with like half of them. 
and some like hey so this is not very useful i'm sorry this is not very useful because it's so out of context um i'm not sure what to do with them except for for somehow either we walk through his document again or uh something. so this one i think we can come at least i have a comment on this one right is commenting on uh in the use cases section right it has yeah. this phrase about each use case talks about the tester and the, and the underlying party roles but he says but not the verifier and so yeah that's very intentional right because the use case doesn't dictate where the verifier is that's part of a solution only the use case is only about the tester and the underlying party so that's intentional he says hmm okay i see it's who has the information who wants the information answer yes So I don't know what other people think, but my opinion is this is a uh, response via email, no change to text. What do others think? Yeah, sure. So from Guy's point of view, I see the problem. Uh, yeah, there's a parallel uh, issue here that I think is out of scope of this one. So yeah, I, I think limited the scope you can answer this yes uh, uh, in general in general uh, regarding the use case section use of verify and test that is confusing in the first place uh, i think that was that, raised by its time i will say that simon frost change which now was uh, what we just merged actually reduces this because now the verifier is defined in a section that comes after the use cases mm -hmm. yeah and so now this appears before the text that defines verifier and so i think that we could say that is the change that we have done to address this and 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 so because we haven't introduced the term no one knows about it that, that, <laughs> that's what you're saying. right yeah. yep yeah, well, okay. i got to I work. okay <laughs> so we're basically saying that guy's comment wouldn't exist if uh given the other change well, i don't know if the word verifier appears before but if you remember like a uh, relying party and a tester appear in like the one paragraph intro and that's why Simon was arguing that uh, it's okay to use those inside the use cases because they were already mentioned. But I don't remember if Verifier was, but it's certainly not the long definition well, or even the long section. Okay. Um, so I'm going to comment. I'm going to leave it open to remember that we're going to reply by email. Pick another. Any chance? Maybe you can go to mine since I'm on the call. That might be faster than trying sure. to do the ones by email. Sure. Eric, uh, I don't know where yours are. And well, I just a couple, but there's a couple that are still open. Okay, I just yeah. checked, and the word verifier does appear in the uh, introduction section. And so. All right, let's start it, with this, Eric. It helps. Can't I make this bigger? Basically, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, there's no def definition of the use of prime in the examples for timestamps, and we can figure it out by the di by the diagram. But I think it's probably useful to have a nomenclature for figuring out when a subsequent use of a time uh, event type is is used yeah, so, so what you well, want is use something of the top prime indicates it's a different instance or something like that that sentence you can do a sentence or, but just identifying what it means is is worthwhile uh so what does it mean so i see it for a good place um our all times let me switch again i wish i could switch this back and forth really quickly and i don't really it doesn't matter to me what the solution is uh, it's just got to be fairly efficient and documented that's all um times with an appended prime r second instance yes yep. and i think people can probably figure out that prime prime might be third but we don't have to define that here yeah 
same uh, same what label point timestamp label same sign head and okay. same sign okay works for me prime Uh, can you change the word R to, in, to indicate? Unless I, people don't like that. And the time itself is not the event, the times indicate. Okay. That's just because the sentence right before that uses the word indicated, so just trying to be consistent with that. Good. And boom, it closed on, on us. There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, of course, I have to go back to the this. You didn't see it close because it <laughs> didn't share the right screen. It should know what I want. So we need AI. The tester can append supplemental evidence to an attestation result when following the passport model. What does that mean? Basically, uh, you can add additional stuff uh, in the passport for when a testation goes to a relying party. And we actually have that in subsequent examples, such as in section 16.2, when a additional nonce to is added as evidence. So we have to, uh, I, I suggested adding a clarification in the proposed text that says, and possibly additional evidence as part of the reply, as part of the attestation result. Okay, so what I was trying to figure out, and I think that the text that's on the screen mentions this, because I think adding evidence to an attestation result when following the passport model only makes sense in the context of a background check model. And right in the middle of the gray box, right above the label rationale number one, it talks about coming into a background check model. And so, yes, that part does make sense where, say, the attester is using a Vera passport model and the relying party is also using a background check model or something like that, which um, I, I did show in one of the TEEP slides as an example of how you can combine stuff, but I don't remember it being used in the architecture document here yet. I think we have an example uh, in section 16.2, we have additional evidence such as announced to as supplemental evidence as part of the passport model diagram. So, hey, can we go to that thing so I know what you were talking about here? Because I want to make sure that it's not used in a context whatever it implies that evidence is consumed by a relying party, which never happens, right? Uh, in the background check model, the relying party treats it as opaque and forwards it onto a verifier that consumes it, which is okay, but only if there's only if the relying party has a verifier on the back end. So this is what you want to see, Dave? Yes, the bottom of the slide shows the relying party, yeah. which would be an extremely normal model. Gotcha. All right. So the two. All right. Yeah, so nonce two is absolutely not evidence. It's in the conveyance, it's in the message conveyance, but it is not in evidence. You can see it's inside the attestation result. Look, so look at the curly brace um, that closes after. And so nonce two is inside the attestation result. There's no evidence in there. There's claim, uh, there's no evidence. That would be an error then. <laughs> Because no, there's no, no point I'm saying the nonce unless you have some way of entangling a, the nonce with the attestation result. Um, is this the one that it, uh, you are right that this is an error? And I think this is one that we just merged last week and the merge was an error, meaning I think there was a pull request that I filed and that probably introduced this error. That the curly brace, if you remember right, Michael, this is yeah. one that you had to add the indentation to. I thought this was correct, but it it, it was uh, yeah. It, it, you are right that that uh, that is incorrect because the attestation result is like two lines above, and it has to match identical because that's signed by the verifier, and you can't modify the signature. You can have something sent where the attestation result plus a nonce is sent as part of the results to a relying party. Yeah, 
Right. And that, that, that was what I used to say. And you are correct that the change of the curly brace was incorrect, which we didn't realize at the time. So it should be RXV it, it minus RXV, which matches above yeah. here. Yeah. It, we should change it back to the way it was be before. Yeah. And it turns out that it was right all along. Yeah. And then it should be there. Delete the, delete the comma. Yeah. That's how it should be because the attestation results is echoing exactly what was in the attestation result that came from the verifier, right? Two lines above, right? Okay. So it's, actually, it's actually, literally the same buffer that's signed by the verifier and you can't invalidate the signature. So would it be okay if I indicated it like this? If it fits, yes. Because I think it needs to be re received. Yeah. And that's the time RA. And then it sends this nonce to, right? And then what is it sends this time? It sends the time between here and here. Well, at least from my point of view, there's no point in having a nonce sent unless it's entangled somehow with the attestation result. The way we've done it in at least some of our deployments is we've had the signature on the attester include the attestation result and the nonce to show that it's been entangled in the attester. Now, we can call that different models or whatnot. We can fix this. My initial comment was just saying that the attester can send additional evidence to the relying party. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what I was thinking, because this, the, uh, if it's not clear, it's my fault, I take the blame. Um, the, what I had in mind, um, I'm not sure I would qualify it as evidence, but here's what I had in mind, that um, the attester does have some key. Let's pretend for the sake of my discussion that it's a public-private key pair, but you know, you probably do the same thing with symmetric. It doesn't matter. Um, that in the attestation result, right, the verifier is saying, I vouch for the attester with the following public key. Okay, That's what's inside the attest attestation result. Uh, among other things, okay? And so then when nonce 2 comes, he can take the attestation result buffer and he can sign attestation result, nonce 2, and that time delta with his private key, yep. send it off to the relying party. The relying party gets it, looks at the attestation result, verifies that he trusts that, then he knows that, hey, I can trust things signed by the private key corresponding to the public key that's in there, and therefore I can trust that this nonce and time and stuff is valid. That's what's so, going on here, but I would never call it evidence. So, so this this thing has some be? kind of a thing because around. Evidence it. is defined as something that goes to a verifier. This is just message processing. It's part of the security uh, security of the conveyance protocol. Well, we're sending something other than an attestation result in order for the relying party to understand what it is. I mean, you're, co you're, you're copying already slash um, analyzed claims in the result. For the relying party to process based That's on an the example. relying party pro policy, right? I think we understand what it is. Well, it, we don't two, call it evidence. We have to call it something. As an example, nonce two might not be encoded as a claim. It might not be inside the EAT. It might be a field in the conveyance protocol. As an example. So what do we call things that are not evidence that are allowed to prove an attestation result? Part of the Somewhere. conveyance messages. It's part of the conveyance message. I mean, the fact if you sent the nonce back over a TLS, that would be that would be enough. Yeah, yeah, but you're That's crossing correct. some very dangerous territory here. Now you could also say that yes, uh, this is a second attester role taking on talking to another verifier that uh, on site is a relying party and would look exactly the same thing. I think that's muddling and layering stuff here by composing composing. Uh, conceptual messages, actually, and I would think that's uh, this is an example, and I think that's way too complicated for an example here. Yeah, but but it, I think I think there's ambiguity on what an attestation result is and what it can include, and we've always said that any of these messages could can include claims. And the the question really is around the semantics of what of who is speaking. And in in the case that we're describing, I think uh, attestation result containing evidence is that it the the entity speaking is the verifier, not the attester. And it's the verifier that's telling the relying party 
that it believes these claims are valid, even though they're just sort of copied claims from evidence, they, they differ because the verifier is asserting them, not the attester. Yes. So why is it different if the verifier or a tester uh, are, are asserting them if you know, and you'll have to know, the keys of each in order to understand that the nonce 2 is entangled with the attestation result? But it's not. It's, it's signed by the same thing, by it, the attester. Right? And if it's, it's signed. If we, if we it, really want it entangled, we needed to send it, you know, three steps earlier so that yeah. the verifier if actually it's signed, signed it. you have the signed uh, nonce I, 2 and the attestation result. I, I don't know what entangled means. In... Uh, signed. Signed qualifies because you have to sign okay. the nonce 2 and the attestation result yeah. with a different key than was on the verifier. Yeah. Yeah. So the signature is the verifier saying, I did something to believe that these claims are valid, and so I signed it. That's what my signature means. But the relying party doesn't know what necessarily what the verifier did. He trusts the verifier to to send him stuff that's that's valid. Well, I think the point here is that we're trying to we're, the nonce two is trying to establish timeliness of that final statement but the problem is it's not establishing timeliness of the attestation results which is probably actually what the very relying party wanted exactly that's why you were talking mm. about about you know, entangling because what you want what you're hoping to do is get that not somehow into the attestation results but you can't it's too late the, the, unless you is, trust the key mm. signing on the attester now, the, the, this equation does verify that the attestation result is fresh why because the time R R A minus time E G A, the R the E G A is before you sent the evidence. Therefore, the attestation result was after time E G, and so that second delta there bounds the time bounds the freshness of the attestation result. Yes. Okay. So that 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 what you're saying is that means the verifier saying I couldn't have signed it before this time, which is which is what you're after. C correct, because the, the verifier has vouched that the attester's computation is correct, right? It's attested, right? Yeah. So that means that it can trust that that delta is valid or it would never have attested to the, ver to the verifier, right? Again, I think this example is way too overly complicated because relay is a fast stretch here. This is not relaying. If you have to uh, com process the thing in order to prove freshness, that's not a relay anymore, I think. The, the uh, term relay, relay does not appear. Yeah, it's relying a relay. party. It's a relying party. Yeah, but this is RR, relay. Uh, evidence relay, you know? So, uh, sorry, uh, result but, relay. This is RR. But, this is not RR. This is this is, this is uh, qualifying it more. I, I think it's over exceeding yeah. this. Also, Thank the composition you. of conceptual messages, again, has never been addressed in the architecture and is now... Uh, uh, highly used here. Uh, that is uh, confusing yeah. to the video. So the, the, the lines in this diagram exactly match the lines in uh, figure five, which is the definition of the passport model. Yeah, I see what the, you're the, saying. The point, the point I think Hank's making is that the, the passport model has two functions. One is the attester and one is as a uh, proxy. That's just forwarding messages, and we're we're overloading that in this bar called the attester. Um, yeah, I'm forwarding. just saying this is consistent with the definition of the passport model. So I don't think it's okay. overly okay. complex. I think it's just part of the regular passport model. We don't right. define As your I have to drop in three minutes. Two. Mm. Uh, we, we, we assume a protocol that we have no, nothing, never ever talked about that that is that is as a prerequisite here and is never discussed. Uh, it is nonce two not included in the conceptual message, but in the relaying method, um, or uh, whatever we call it. Um, that is a lot of assumptions. Well, okay. so, so hey, before just... we go, let's go before hmm. we go into that in our minute. Thomas, moving the the nonce two out of that parenthesis, does that deal with a, a a great deal of your problem, or you still have issues that in this that you're bringing up in this issue? This is actually me that brought up the issue. The um, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, Eric. It's sorry. fine. The question I had in my original write-up said either we note that you can add additional claims or evidence. I don't care what they're called. 
for somebody using the passport model or we don't. And the other way to deal with it would be text inside the composition section. The real thing I'm trying to highlight in my original issue was that I don't want anybody to preclude the ability to add additional information as part of the messages and claim that it's not the passport model because we've added supplemental information. Yeah, and I have to drop shortly. I agree with Eric, other than it shouldn't use the word evidence when doing that. And you said you didn't feel strongly about using the word evidence. Any other words that you said, you know, information and stuff would be fine with me. So that, that's my point is that we just have to solve the the, yeah. the solution for what do we call the extra stuff that's sent. Yeah, and so before we got into the long detailed discussion, I just said it was part of the conveyance message, but you know, I, I'm just trying to get in word? a couple comments here because I got to drop in about two minutes and then you guys can finish. What was the word that you want to use here instead of evidence? I, I think it's correct to use claims. It may also be correct to say other information. Um, I thought claims were, well, let me ask a question about claims. If you have fields in TLS that's not part of the payload, would you still call those claims? Maybe. Maybe. It, it depends, yeah. Whatever the answer is, that because that, that, I'd say I can go along with it either way, as long as, we're, as long as we would treat the answer as being yes, then claims is correct. If anybody wants to argue no, then pick a different word like information. I prefer claims. And the person who writes that TLS process needs to yeah, I, to I'm okay with what they mean. I, I just want to make sure nobody else has has uh, angst about that, but that's fine with me. I have no issue with claims. Eric, are you good with this text? This change you proposed it. Yes, Does that I close your issue. It closes the issue. It opens up another one for what should be the diagram, but it closes this particular issue. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I got to drop now at seven forty-five. Okay, thanks. So. Uh, if you what's on the screen looks fine to me. So, all right, bye, folks. Yeah. Bye. Passport uh, attestation results close number one sixty seven. All right, Eric, let's talk about the efficacy of attestation results. This is going to be a fun one. And, and, and you have to say that word at least six times while you're talking about it. Without, oh, dear. Without li uh, any lift or anything else. If I have to say it four six times, I'll resolve the issue. <laughs> now, basically, the uh, issue words. here is that when we make a claim or when we, when we do an attestation result, uh, we're asserting that whatever the level is or whatever is being asserted back is of equal weight. And that's not really necessarily gonna be the truth, uh, or whatever the truth means. Basically what we have is that we have asset station results being pushed back and they're gonna vary based on the quality and quantity of evidence that's available. So there's gonna be some potentially confidence level that is a result in the attesting uh, or in the attestation result based on how good the claims and the attesting environment is able to produce those claims. We don't mention that. I don't think that we have to solve the answer here, but I think it's important to hint that the attestation result, if it has to be quantified or leveled, has some relationship to the value of the inputs to that evidence. And we're not actually highlighting that um, that relationship anywhere in the document. I think it's worth at least highlighting it somewhere in the document that there is uh, not necessarily an equivalency in attestation results uh, for- Relying parties get what they pay for. Yeah, they get what they pay for. But yeah. all I'm hoping is that we say somewhere in here that that attestation results are dependent on the ability to make inferences <laughs> from the attesting environment. So, so we say in the in section eight three we include the line. Uh, it says attestation results may be a boolean, simply impl implicating compliance or non-compliance or verifiers appraisal policy or or a rich set of claims about the attester against which throwing par party applies its appraisal policy. 
So reading into what we mean by rich set of claims potentially uh, is not, maybe more is needed there. I think it's worthwhile. Let me give you a real world example. I'm looking at routers and switches and I'm having to say, is it trustworthy or not? And we are maybe making a Boolean claim, but the claim for one box that has a much stronger, you know, set of of uh, chips that are able to v validate further down the boot cycle is different than one that is, let's say, a software-based process. And we just don't mention that anywhere. And I really think that it's an important concept to to highlight is that attestation results are deeply bound to the to the uh, testing environment. Common criteria uses the term strength of function, and it seems like you're describing that concept. Yes. And we should just at least bring up that the strength of function is not discussed. In fact, uh, in talking about this, you know, internally, I've heard people talk about, well, we have to include some information about the strength of function in order to understand um, what is being asserted as the attestation results. And I know there's other people on the call who care about strength of function, and I think that they also have a reason to want to assert um, potentially additional information about what was done as the derivation of the attestation results. Well, the side effect here is that however uh, delicate and sophisticated the policies are, they can't make something up that is not founded in evidence. That's the pure truth. And so if the evidence is uh, sparse, um, that has a deterrent effect on the uh, on these uh, strength here, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so that's all I'm trying to do is make sure that there's a point in here where people just don't assume the assertion of the uh, uh, attestation result means it's this when that won't match the real world. Paula. Where would strength like your text. function come from? Where would strength should should this should this be um, a term like this or I don't know? Uh, if we want to point to you know some other place that defines it, uh, I mean I'm 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 assigning the semantics from common criteria. They may have some some you know detail that is not appropriate though. Uh, I don't know how to cite that. We'll have to find out what you'll have to figure it out. That. Yeah, but but basically the the sentence or the fr fragment following that is defining what we mean by strength of function, which is that it's qualitatively different in strength. So this already covers my comments. So I'm happy to say, at least from my point of view, it's covered. And then if people can just figure out what reference it is, I'm good. But I think that this is an important concept. And uh, now that it's in there, I, I think you've covered all the comments that I put in as part of the okay. my last call review. Um. Okay. Any uh, any expertise on common criteria documents? I'm used to just using them as you know things to throw people at when you want to injure them. People. What do you mean by experience? What are you looking for? Uh, someone who knows the documents more than me. You know, as I said, I just remember throwing the these large books at people with the intention of harming them, but. They were heavy. They're heavy, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you throw them at people and they you know. Uh well, let's take it offline and see if there's we can find something that's public that we can cite. Okay. 
But we captured the ref for attestation result CC in uh, issue. Please. Pardon me? Could you create an issue from that? Like a uh, ref needed for CC strength? I'm just leaving function. this open. Is that okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, that's even better. Of course. Okay. Just amending it. Yeah. Okay, that's closed. Uh, Eric, do you have another one here? No, that's it. We are not following your screen share, Michael. Oh. We still see the editor. Michael, if you want a quick one, I've um, I've done the PR for two two eight. <laughs> it says small. <laughs> it's small. Yeah, uh, I guess if you're happy with that, I'm okay. I would have divided the whole thing up into three sentences. Um, but um, yeah. Um, so I posted a link to the glossary that defines strength of function. Oh, thanks. It's online. Cool. Um, yeah, now let me really just hard. divide the contrast. So uh, uh, this is a long sentence now. It has been before. It's longer now. So the content is correct, but uh, editorial pass will uh, find this again as too long sentence and uh, has to issue something there. Then. I think it's we don't have to address chopping up here right now. I think content is more important here right now. If you can agree on content right now, that would be uh, nice. So any objections still here, yeah, or is this fine, uh, everybody? I, I want it split up into multiple sentences. Uh, yeah, you can, take, my, make a, you can make an additional uh, uh, or amendment to the issue and, and, and resolve that, but I would like to see this accepted first and then issued again. Would that be okay? Yeah. Thanks. Or, Mike, you could put the full stop after fresh on the first one, uh, instance. So by checking time RG, Threshold full stop, the threshold, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is in cutting it in half. No, not there, not there. Uh, not here? No, no, no. Uh, so after the formula, by okay. checking time RG, blah, 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 blah. Okay, threshold dot, uh, full stop, sorry. Uh, then uh, erase where, and then the threshold is decided by the appraisal policy for evidence, and again, it needs to take into consideration blah, blah, blah. Okay. So like this. Yeah. This is two, two sentences now, not three as you, as you would like to. Uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe even better. Ah, this is fine. For now. Again, uh, sentence structure will be addressed uh, afterwards. Wow. Well, uh, RFC editor is good, but not always that good. No, I mean, by us. <laughs> we don't leave everything to easy. Well, you can't leave it. That's so. That's, uh, we have to get it right. I don't think we can. I don't. I agree that you can. It's good to do things. So if you're happy with this, then we'll commit it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Okay, uh, seeing it's the top of the hour, uh, I'm going to close the call. And we're meeting again next week. Um, I think I got the strength of function thing in. Thank you for finding that so quickly. Okay. Uh, and... Yeah. Uh, supporting open issues with uh, pull requests helps, but I think Thomas already highlighted uh, that's that's the plan. So thanks for that. Yeah, uh, I think that having reorganized the the text and made a bunch of changes, I'm going to propose that we push a version this week and then continue on next week, just so that we have something easier to diff against. Works for me. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Excellent plan. Okay, so I'm going to do that. All right, great. Thank you all. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sorry.